Hello, this is the fifth episode in the JavaScript Bushido series where I teach Cooksdo programming. This is a two-part episode where I first create a 360-degree viewer using plain old JavaScript and the A-Frame library. This library is based off 3.js and provides a platform to build web VR applications. In the second episode, I will go ahead and create a Cooksdo application which will dynamically load images on request. This will allow you to create your own photo slideshow without hard coding the images into the HTML code. So let's get right to it. Okay, so let's get right to it. So first let's take a quick peek at the uh, course outline here. So what I want to do is I want to create a 360 degree viewer and I want to do it in plain JavaScript using the iframe library. Then I want to use that code and create a Cooksdo application to display those 360 degree images, dynamically loading them, and finally integrate it into Astronos. So the first step is we create a new HTML page and uh, let's call this uh, 360 view HTML and save this. Okay. And then uh, what you have to do is you have to include the library itself. Okay, so let's cut this in here. And uh, in this case, I'm going to use the uh, A-Frame library directly from the Git repository. And that's the first step. And we can actually go ahead and create our first web VR based uh, web application. So let's go to this AC. So anything in um, the A-Frame environment or in the A-Frame library is a scene or is co contained within a scene. And uh, one of the things that we want to do is to this is out here, and we want to say that we want to use the cursor as uh, a way to select objects. So we say gray And uh, congratulations, this is your first WebVR based application. But in order to actually see something and what, what we want to create here is a 360 degree view, we need to create a what's called a skybox. So, let's call this sky. And then the source we uh, define. Um, this is a image that I had uh, found on the internet. So you can simply go to Google you search for equirectangular images and you will find a lot of um, sample code that you can use. So in that sky box, um, this is the source. I also want to define an ID so that I can get to it uh, later on and replace the source with another image. So ID equals, let's call this panel. And then finally, um, and that's that's not 100% necessary, but we give it a center position of 0, 0, 0. So now let me go and upload a couple of images here uh, so that we can have actually something to play with. Okay, so and then once this is all complete, we can close this out and then save this and see if we get anything here. So as you can see, we have the rendering, we have the mouse which is using the cursor quite strangely. But in general, this is this is already your first um, 360. <laughs> Okay, so it turns out recording the browser while we have multiple WebGL scenes ongoing causes some issues on my system. So where have we left off? Okay, so we want to uh, actually complete the skybox here, a sky. So close this out and then what we want to do, we want to add in a camera. And 
This camera also uh, defines uh, the cursor and this cursor has two animations. One uh, for the case in case you click on it and the second one in case of uh, you pointing to a hotspot. In that case the cursor is going to change in size. And then the next what we want to do is we want to add in some text here. And uh, let's go through the text line by line. So the first uh, text that we have here is uh, basically the uh, previous uh, pointer. So it's a text which will allow you to go back to the previous picture. Then we have the previous next text just as informational text. And then we have an entity here which is also text. And within this entity we define or we want to display the name of the image that we display. Um, and the reason why I took why I named this an entity is because I want to change this text dynamically when uh, the, when we actually change the background picture. And finally, the text here is the same as up here, which is just the next uh, button, basically uh, pointing to the next or loading the next image into the background. Um, finally, we have two more things that we needed to add, uh, which are two boxes. These boxes are invisible, uh, set to false and uh, they are encapsulating the previous and the next button and we need those to uh, capture the mouse pointer so and then as a final thing what do we need to add here inside the scene uh, are the assets right the assets you load the, you preload and the scene the 3d scene will not work until everything is done so once we have this we save it and then let's see what happens when we click on play so here the scene comes up and here's the first image as you can see currently uh, all is in place and there's one piece missing let me close this here there's one piece missing where we actually have to add in the javascript code so let's get right to it and add the script to the uh, head here and uh, let me go through and explain what's going on here we first define three global variables, start, end, and current, and those coincide with the uh, values that we defined here under assets. So from panel 1 to panel 11, that's the range, and then we default the sky uh, box to panel 3, uh, to the panel 3 image. Next, we're going to call the register component of the A-frame library, and we register this component, which is the previous click, which if we go down here, we find is the invisible box which wraps around this previous text button basically. So in this previous text, it's just those two back arrows. And then we have the next text, which next text, which would be the uh, forward arrows, which uh, are wrapped around this, wrapped inside this next click uh, invisible box. So, and for this, <coughs> for this previous click, uh, element that we register here with the A-frame library, the init function is being called and what we want to do here is we register three callback functions. One is mouse enter, one is mouse leave and the third one is the click. Now mouse enter and mouse leave simply change the background color to indicate to the user that this is a hotspot where he can click and some action will happen. Not very dissimilar to a link where that you see in any normal web page. And then the interesting stuff actually happens here in the onClick uh, function, where the first thing that we do, now remember this click happens on the invisible box, and we want to forward that click event to the text itself. And why do we want to do this? We want to trigger this animation once this box is clicked, forwarded to this uh, text element, which is then triggered the click event and triggers the animation. And then next is we actually decrease the current pointer, so making sure that it's uh, <clears throat> it's greater than the starting point. And uh, then we define the source name. And the source name is panel from 1 to 11. So panel 1, in this case we start at 3, the next one would be panel 4. With this we get the element by ID, the source name here. And that would mean that we actually get this dome element, if it would be 4. And from that dome element, what we're going to do with that information is we, um, 
extract the file name down here and then we set the file name to the dome element file name and let me show you how that works so that would be this entity the file name entity and that entity itself is a text which has a value an attribute text and a sub attribute of value and this is what we want to change we want to change a source text value to the current or to the new file name that we defined here that would be panel for the jpeg in this case and uh, what i skipped here briefly is the actually the main thing that changes the background image we're going to get the panel dome element which if you remember correctly is the skybox uh, right here so that based on this id we're going to get this dome element and then we're changing the uh, source attribute of that uh, element we're changing set, we're using set attribute source and we're changing it to the source element uh, source name for example panel 4 right so the source and panel 4 would point to this dome element right here and it would pull out the panel 4 jpeg so let's save this and let's see if it all works let's click start and let's wait all right we can see the hotspots are working let's wait for the pictures to be loaded everything is moving fine and the pictures are being shown and let me make this a bit bigger here and here we have a nice looking cockpit forward backwards works and here in space and you get the drift right and let me find so this one is a nice picture of a sundown and that concludes the first part of episode 5 where we used plain old javascript and the a-frame library to create a 360 degree image viewer this concludes the first part of the fifth episode in the JavaScript Bushido series. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you found it informational. You can find a link to the source code below. You can also leave me co a comment here or visit my blog on the softwaresamurai.org where you will find more information about JavaScript, Cookstu or programming in general. Also, please let me know if there's a certain topic or problem you want me to talk about in a future episode. I am always open for suggestions. I hope to see you back soon.